Hi, I'm Dr. Vonda Wright, and this is Hot For Your Health. In this episode of Hot For Your Health, I'm joined by Jennifer Berman, who is a celebrity urologist, as she speaks about a subject that is sometimes ignored by women, our sexuality. She talks about sexual dysfunction and how we can truly reclaim our sex lives. The thing about uh, sex and health is that they're intimately related. Your health and your mobility, your mobility and your brain, the same thing about sex. It's about how we think, not only how we think in terms of think, visualize, whatever her things were, you know, take action. It's, it's thinking in terms of, you know, our, how, you, I don't know if you're familiar with Wayne Dyer, change your thoughts, change your life, or wishes fulfilled, or, you know, all of this, this pop culture kind of new age thought, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Joel, what's his name, Joel Osteen, they, you know, they're over here, and then medicine is over here. You know that we're dogmatic we're pragmatic we're going to you know change your diet change your exercise take control of your lives we, but what what i have done and where there's in my own practice in my own life and where there's a, especially in la i don't know whether it's an la thing or but i think it's a shift where we're marrying mind body and spirit and the thing about the spirit is is what you think not only think i'm going to do this i'm going to do this you can't just think it you have to believe it and you have to feel it. And we're, that quote from Henry David Thoreau, you know, live the best life you imagine. What you imagine and what's real, you know, my reality and what I perceive and what I'm seeing with the four girls in here is different what she perceives and which is real. Neither, you know, who knows what's real, but our perception is our reality. So when we're taking being advocates for our health, for our bodies, for our sexuality, how we, how we perceive our life and what's important really manifests. So, and I'll keep coming back to that. I know that's a little bit of heavy. So this is something, you know, they used to say when women were going through uh, menstruation, they were hysterical. And the term hysteria was, was what was used to describe um, the symptoms that women exhibited of sleeplessness, nervousness, irrit irritability, or whatnot. This, um, this oh, here, I'll, I didn't show that. This is um, actually a play on Broadway called In the Next Room. It was based on a physician who was treating these women. They would come to him, and they would come to him regularly, almost compulsively, ultimately, to be treated. And how he treated them was with um, with vibrators basically because orgasm, having an orgasm helped to decrease menstrual cramps, helped to decrease anxiety, helped to improve mood and um, you know so that, that, that was sort of a medical treatment back in the day and the, these, the, that slide is early vibrators at that time they were more focused on um, the uterus and uterine contractions. There was actually two different kinds of orgasm, three different kinds of orgasms or contractions that happen with orgasm: uterine contractions, vaginal contractions, and contractions through clitoral stimulation. So not all women can have vaginal orgasms. In fact, during sex, only about 20, 20 to 30 percent of women can have an orgasm with normal penovaginal intercourse. Most require some other form of stimulation, be it clitoral stimulation or manual stim stimulation. And I want to bring that up to have, you know, when we're talking about orgasmic disorder, women will say, I can't have an orgasm. But it's really that they, it's not that they can't have an orgasm. They can't have, there's, they feel they can't have an orgasm because they are having difficulty during you know, during intercourse. So I want to emphasize to you is that orga orgasm can be clitoral, vaginal, or uterine, through uterine. Vaginal orgasms are um, created through more traction and pressure on the anterior part of the vagina. Um, women also experience uterine contractions during orgasm. Some women that, have, that there's, they've done studies in women that have had hysterectomy for whatever reason will report 
decrease in the intensity of their orgasm. So it's something that I, you know, a lot of times um, older women will say, I, I, my doctor says I need to have a hysterectomy for my fibroid or for my endometriosis, or I'm having a lot of bleeding, so he's just going to take it out. You know, I would say it depends, you know, women that experience, and not all women experience deep pelvic floor contractions with orgasm, but those that do, do experience a change following hysterectomy. So I wanted to put this slide up about what I talked about prevention earlier, about the perimenopause. Perimenopause, this is when you're in your, sometimes it's earlier, sometimes later, but women in their mid to late 30s to 40s. Menopause happens usually around early 50s, and it's defined when you don't have a period for at least a year. The perimenopause is everything before that, and it can start in our early 30s to some, some degree, mid 30s. It's usually mid to late 30s, early 40s is when these symptoms start to happen, and they're subtle, and they creep up, and they're, and they're, they're, uh, they're vague at times, and they're easily attributed to stress or our jobs or you know the you know too multitasking too much or not having a vacation and we can push as we were saying earlier we tend to put our needs aside and we the reason we put our needs aside is because we're multitasking but also because we say in the back of our heads this is just, you know this will go away and the reason we're not as proactive about our health you know it's one thing if we have a lump or a sore throat, or we see a mole, but being proactive about something that hasn't existed yet, being, you know, a demise of our health or sexual dysfunction is, is hard. These are quality of life issues. We're talking about improving our quality of life and our longevity. Now, the, here's the key, is by attending to these things, our quality of life, our longevity, increasing our mobility, which increases our brain, our brain function and the endorphins and testosterone secretions. Testosterone and growth hormone are secreted when, we're, when, we're exer when we exercise. Increases the, you know, our uh, not only our quality of life, but our sexual health and our sexuality, which increases our relationship health, which improves our happiness and well-being. So they're all really in interrelated. So when you think about what motivates us, how do you motivate yourself to go to the gym and eat well when you can't see the result right away? And I'll tell you just from personal experience, you know, I started to, you know, I'm, I'm 49, so almost 50, totally perimenopausal every single one of those symptoms and I started and I lived as I evolved you know as a surgeon I'm a urologist by training so on the go you know we would eat when you can sleep when you can have sex when you can they used to say but the and on the vending machines and diet so caffeine and sugar were how I sustained myself and I was a terrible role model for my kids you know pop tarts and diet coke in the morning I would eat you know Starbucks the Vanilla ice blenders with whipped cream, my secretary would bring those up. And I, you know, fortunately I didn't have, you know, weight, you know, I, I somehow I sustained, I, was, I wasn't over, overweight, but I had terrible, I mean, the fatigue was terrible, the injury was terrible, mood, awful. And, so, and, I, and then what happened was memory. My short-term memory, not only was I forgetting where I left my keys or forgetting people's names, I would forget that I had taken you know, I, an Advil, I would forget, you know, that I had a place that I had gone. I mean, it started getting worse and worse. And I decided, well, it must be the Diet Coke. So I made an effort to stop Diet Coke, which was like basically stopping heroin. It was very difficult. And um, then I, you know, then I worked through that. And then I was and then I started, uh, I saw a veg, veg, what's it called, a Nutribullet. The, have you seen those on TV, the Nutribullet? And between, and so the Nutribullet has changed my life. And once I started doing the Nutribullet and stopped the Diet Coke, I, was feeling, I said, well, maybe I should exercise. And for me, working, and like that woman said earlier, when she scheduled to exercise, it pushed her whole day off. That's what happens to me. They have something, I don't know if they have it here, called Soul Cycle. Have you heard about it? Um, they have it in, anyway, this, it's taken America by storm, the Soul Cycle thing, and I discovered it. It is 45 minutes, you go in and out. It's basically spinning, dancing on a bike that w in a cl in, with bunches of people, and it's all to the same beat, and the, and the music is playing, and they're shouting inspirational stuff at you, and it's dimly lit, and then 
that, and then that was it. So I got hooked on Soul Cycle, my Vegematic, stopped Diet Coke, and it was miraculous what, how, th my, how my energy shifted, how my mood shifted, how once I started seeing, you know, again, I wasn't struggling so much with weight, but once I started seeing like the, you know, the gushy parts that were, the, that, you know, th I could see my body change. And so I'll say that for you too, is that little steps, when you start to take little steps, and then little steps reinforce, and you change, you know, and you, you become motivated, and you take action, and you prioritize, everything falls into, the, falls into place. When we say that our sub, we subconsciously don't make a decision to not put ourselves right, it's, it's not that we're not making the decision to not put ourselves apart, we aren't making the decision to. So I'm telling all of you, make a decision to put your sexual health as a priority, to protect and preserve, and not only that, but to enhance. I'm Jennifer, I'm 40, and I love my Botox. I love not seeing those lines anymore. I'm in and out in about 20 minutes. You can tell there's a glow in their face. I don't feel 60, I don't look 60, I mean, I feel great. I love it here at the Skin Center. Bye-bye, crow's feet. <laughs> <laughs> Find your own beautiful at Pennsylvania's number one Botox provider, the Skin Center, with one of our introductory express offers, starting at just $99. I'm aging beautifully. <laughs> The Federal Health Insurance Marketplace is now open. That means you're free to shop for the health plan that's right for you. UPMC Health Plan has some of the most affordable plans on the marketplace. And they all give you full in-network access to UPMC, plus other doctors and hospitals in your community. Visit UPMCHealthPlan.com or call 1-855-297-UPMC to learn why so many people have chosen UPMC Health Plan. Enroll today. So we want to have not only not only having sex, but we want to have satisfying satisfying sex. So this slide just I when I always talk about red flags. How do you know if it's a medical problem or a physical problem? You know, is it in my head? I like patient women do not want to hear that it's all in your head when they come come to your office. But for you to know, maybe is this problem lifelong? Like we talked about the orgasmic disorder. Have you always had this problem, or did it happen after some something some occurrence in your life? Are the symptoms situational, meaning you have them at home but not on vacation? You have them with your boyfriend but not with his his friend you know things along those lines unresolved history of sexual abuse or trauma that does not doom one to sexual dysfunction it depends on whether it was resolved or unresolved who was told did you receive support was there you know any action taken against the person so having a sexual abuse history doesn't mean that you're you're going to have sexual dysfunction but it does matter whether it was addressed and, and dealt with is there any prior psychiatric history, history of depression and or chronic stress? I'll tell you, stress, chronic stress, we are all, I, I, there's probably not, anyone who says that they're not stressed, may, even in high school as seniors, you're stressed because you're applying to colleges and you've got the, the SATs and you've got your parents breathing down your neck and you're trying, you're about to go to college. So everybody is stressed and we're all do it to, and we're all stressed to, to a different degree. Stress is absolutely <laughs> the biggest issue related to health, not only sexual health, cardiovascular health, brain health, you know, hormone health. When there's stress, what happens when there's stress is there's inflammation. And cells, aging is stress. So remember she talked about the, set, the little rats that were old and they put, she put their cells in culture and they would just die. That's what happens to us. We die, aging is inflammation. So this whole movement of anti-aging, anti-longevity centers is to stop inflammation. And one of the best ways that we can stop inflammation is to minimize stress in our lives. How do you do that? It's easier said than done. Go minimize your stress. What it means is, and it's different to each and every one of you, to me it meant, you know, this is how I minimize stress. The only thing that absolutely 100% minimizes stress for me is riding, is horses. Is I can't meditate, other people will say meditate 20 minutes a day, you know, in the morning and evening, quiet your brain. I can do that a little bit, but it has to be, the, nobody else can be around, there can't be any other noise, I have to listen. It has to be something that's pretty good, and I, li and I can do guided meditations, and that works. But that, and if you can do that, that's great, and I encourage you all to do that. 
But everybody has something new. Some people run, some people exercise. The soul cycle a little bit, but not the same as on a horse. Some people do scrapbooking, some people play music, some people you know, get it from jogging or running, from being with friends. Whatever it is, you have to do, whether it be at least once a week, twice a week, preferably more than that, to that, that's, what, that's what she means by taking care of, taking care of you. It's not taking care of the, the movement, it's taking care of your brain. So movement affects your brain, but your brain also affects your body. The power that your brain has to, he, to create disease and also to heal is profound. And so, we're, so for me, so what, what I mean by when I'm on the horse, when I'm on a horse, I can't think, I'm not thinking about my kids, I'm not thinking about boyfriends, ex-husbands, I'm not thinking about what I have to do, what I have. I am absolutely 100% in the moment. Me and that horse, me connected to that horse, me having trust for that horse and love of it. It's an absolute sheer total. And, 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 it's, and, I can't, and when I don't ride, that for me, everybody is different, but I'm just saying from my part, when I don't do that, my, I'm off. I'm shorter, I'm more irritable, I'm snappy with my kids, I'm snappy with the, ki my, the people in my office. I, you know, it, that's just the way it is. So for all, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. So for me, you know, and it's a very expensive sport and hobby, and I wish I've tried to find other things. The soul cycle is a little bit closer, but you know, more cost-effective ways of minimizing my stress, I can't. But each and every one of you has to have a way and a thing and your secret and your to get to get centered, to get balanced, to come back to that place because it's your mind, it's your body, and it's your spirit. And when you are in the moment, whatever that is. For you, that's when healing begins. This whole, I mean, all of you know about the placebo, right? And placebo effect. And it's a real problem for pharmaceutical companies because they're having to enroll like three times as many people in their studies because of the placebo effect. And what happens when, with the placebo is when you take a pill and you think it's going to do something for you, lower your blood pressure, increase your orgasms, make you skinnier, whatever it is, because you believe it works, it works, right? So the cells in your body, we're talking about changing DNA earlier, your thoughts change your DNA, which gives medical science credibility to Wayne Dyer's change your thoughts, change your life. So when you think something's working, when you believe something's happening, it actually does. So imagining the future that you want for yourself Thinking that you, the secret, you know about the secret, right? Manifesting. This is manifesting. The science of manifesting. Okay. If you think something is going to be beneficial to you, or good, be it exercise, be it meditation, be it riding a horse, be it whatever it is, it actually shifts and changes. Because energy is thought. You know, our our brain and central nervous system has. We're 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 running at certain electrical signals, and electrical, and which creates matter. So we are really mo carbon particles moving. So I'm moving, the chair is moving, everything's moving. And thoughts are at different frequencies. And they have found that positive thoughts go at one frequency and negative thoughts go at a negative frequency. So when we change, you know, when you talk about connecting, I connected with her or her, you know, or she had good energy, that's what we're talking about, you know, sort of our energy space. And we can, you know, again, this is all sort of how our minds, our bodies, and our health are intimately connected. And then I'm taking it one more level. It's our mind, our body, our health, and our spirit. Because technically, you know, if you buy into this, I do, that we are, you know, physical, spiritual beings occupying the, this body. And there's a lot more going on. You know, our brains are filters. We're filtering. If I was aware of the buzz and her and her moving and her th and her sneezing and the free and this and the hum of the and all these different things, I wouldn't be able to focus. Our brains are filtering out information down into you know so that so that so that we can function. If we were so attuned to all that, we wouldn't be able to function. So I there's a lot more that that we can't even see and dimensions that we can't even feel. But the point is is that being balanced, everything is about balance, through life balance, hormone balance, you know, balance, work balance, everything is about balance. So I'll let you ponder on that. There's surgeries now going on to increase 
sorry, this looks great, to um, puff. It's called a labia puff procedure. And they're doing um, vaginal rejuvenation surgeries. And I don't know where this is coming from. The women are requesting it. I don't do the surgery, but the women are requesting these procedures. I think it's based on the, you know, the, uh, the porn stars or what, what um, it, the er erotic images of the Playboy airbrushed ideal. Thank you so much for joining me this week for this episode of Hot For Your Health. You know, you are a powerful force in your own health, and I'm excited that you took the time this Thursday to learn more from our nation's authorities in health. I hope that you subscribe so that you don't miss one single episode. Join us next week for Hot For Your Health, and for more information, find it at womenshealthconversations.com.